It's been pretty dramatic last year to this year in terms of, of race wins and such. And there was something about the forks, uh, a, a fork issue. What was going on there? Was that really the magic? Yeah, you know, uh, if it's uh, if it was the, the new forks we put in, the new setting or my new mindset that came, I, I like to think it was the forks. You know, last year, my riding I don't think has changed at all from last year. It's just last year I wasn't comfortable on the bike. Obviously, the bike was awesome. I mean, it's dominated how many years and and uh, all that stuff. I and I wasn't I wasn't mad, you know, at the bike or at my team. It's just we couldn't get the right combination where I could ride it hard. I felt like I could only ride 70, 80 percent, and you know that's not no excuses. We just couldn't get it done, get it working right where I was comfortable on it. Now when I get on the bike, I feel like I can ride it. You know, I can ride it as hard as I want, and it, it showed this year. That's been a big breakthrough. And even if we didn't, you know, couldn't win the title last year if we had our speed this year it could have been a lot better we just wasn't comfortable really last year with the bike and uh but like i said i, I knew what it was capable of because it was sitting there winning racing and, and won titles i was just kind of upset with with myself and all that stuff but uh you know we made a big change this year and now i'm able to to really give it all i got and uh you know it's, it's definitely showed this year and that uh, th that big change is centered around the forks is, is it the forks yeah that was as soon as from from we put the forks on in march or in February, and I told him as soon as I, I said I can actually feel when I'm pushing the bike, when I've got the front end really loaded in the middle of the corner, I can feel what it's doing. Last year, the bike could have been working completely fine and wasn't about to crash or do anything weird, but I had no feel and I couldn't I couldn't ride it. I couldn't make myself go in there and, and wait till it started to tuck. I, I want to be able to feel when it's on that verge and, and now I have all the feeling I want, so it's, uh, it's great now. <laughs> We took a, we did a Jason Pridmore's school earlier in the week, and he says when you come out to the school uh, that you you just ride the SV 650s. You don't get on any other other bikes. And so I was curious what what's happening there with with that and the S and the SVs. Oh, I don't know. I when I I've been out to the schools a couple times, and like I said, every time I go out there, I ride the, the SVs, and they're just fun, man. They're they're slow and. They're all, you know, they're, they're, you know, they're moving around, and it's good to go ride, and, and it's, they're, they're really competitive. We get out there, and we'll get him on one, and, and uh, all the instructors, and we basically have an SV cup, and, you know, like I said, they're so, they're so much the same that it's just all about the rider, and we go out there banging each other around and, and all that fun stuff, but, yeah, I, I love riding those things. If I had a street bike, that's probably what I'd get, and that's, I spend all my time on one of those. And, and where do you put your trophies from these SV Cups? Do you have a special place in the house? <laughs> we don't really have trophies. They're just bragging rights or $100 bills or something. <laughs> All right. Um, now, we're, we're a crew from Utah, okay? So that's where, you know, we first got this gig going. And rumor has it that, that you're uh, uh, dating the governor's daughter. Oh. Is that, am I right about that? No, we, we went out on a date when, uh, when I was in Utah, but no, we're not, we're not dating, but, you know, okay. nice girl, we're friends. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just a Utah thing, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Governor, we think it's pretty cool. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, what are you doing nowadays? Okay, you're one of the top riders in the world. What are you doing to continue to progress and learn and get better? Where... How do you do that? Who do you talk to? What do you What do you do? Uh, you know what? Just now that it's kind of not all the races, but but most of them this year, we've kind of been the man to beat. Um, I just I'll watch I'll watch videos of myself and critique. You know, just last night I was watching like when we came here a couple months ago. No one was really close to us. We had 10 second leads and and everything. But uh, you know, I watch those tapes, slow motion replay, and you know rewind all that stuff and looking at what I was still doing wrong and how I could go faster and uh, like, like what I uh, just you know maybe little bits of corners not rolling through the corner good enough or spending too much time on the side of the tire and not letting it you know get heat out of it little stuff like that it's uh, it's it's the little bitty tents a lap now that, that really make a difference we have an awesome bike to, to win here. The Suzuki GSX-R1000 is working. It's working awesome. And when we were here, I mean, me and Matt were way ahead of everybody. But, you know, we're in that mode now where we don't have to do it. 
we don't need to do it. We just need to be here and uh, go around and uh, go ride around, finish fifth or sixth, and try to win a championship. But it's always it's always training harder, trying to mentally prepare yourself a little bit better, and and uh, just believing when you go to the track, not not being cocky about it, being confident that you're the man to beat. You set the time. You want everybody chasing you. That's what you need to do. You can't always, you know. Last year I showed up and I was like, okay, it's a race for a second. Hopefully I can kind of stick with Matt for a couple laps. Now it's you know. Uh, you know, I'm I'm want to get away from everybody. I want to win the races. I want the pole. I want all the points. And uh, you just got to believe in yourself. And you know, if you're if you think you're riding okay and you're physically fit, then there shouldn't be anything holding you back. Was it difficult to learn how to lead from the front, or did it come naturally? Was there an epiphany where you went, "Oh yeah, this is it," or or how did that? You know, it, it, it was weird. Daytona was an awesome race with me and Matt. We went back and forth. I just you know, he definitely outsmarted me there. Uh, Barber, we had a good race. He had a couple mishaps, ran off the track, and then crashed, and all that stuff. We won those two races. And then at Fontana, it was a good battle, and the last few laps of both races, we checked out and won that. And then everybody said, "I can't lead from the front," and all you know, all this. And I was like, "All right." Went to Sears Point. I led every single lap of both races, and and uh, a lot of the races we did that. We would get to the to the front early, get a three second lead, and and cruise around. I I like doing that. I like being by myself and basically you can you can do it both ways you can you know i'm really good the first couple laps get a good gap on them and run your pace and if they're going to chase you or they're going to catch you they're going to have to go faster than your pace to catch you or if you know you got them beat hands down then you get a four or five second lead and go slow down and uh, just keep the gap the same and if they take time out of you you step it up but the the tracks where you don't know if you can win or, or you're a little bit worried is basically where you set your lap time in your head I've got to hit that every single lap and if they're gonna catch me they're gonna have to go faster than that every lap to catch me and um, like you know this year at uh, at Laguna and then Ohio last time and at Sears it was basically I want to get a five second lead and keep them there and if they try to take time out I'll put more time on them and you know play mental games with them so <laughs> it's uh you know there's a there's a lot of that kind of stuff but it's uh you know there, there's there's pros and cons I, I definitely like leading with a few seconds and you know you know having some extra in the in the back. Do you miss super sport? Do you miss the super sport bike, or, or do you feel like, yeah, this, let's just do the super bike thing? You know, the the six hundred is fun to ride. I, I love riding it. It's just from the first year, you know, we had a we had a mechanical in the second race, and then the third race I got taken out, and just some other stuff. It, by round three, we were seventy points out of it or something. So it's like, okay, well, this isn't any fun. But and as soon as that happened, we were winning in super bike. So obviously, your 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 goals go. <laughs> not so much on that bike and 100 percent on that bike because it's the premier class and all that um for me it was kind of hard riding both classes just because we only have like 15 20 minute breaks in between a 600 and super bike race next year i'll be riding super stock which will give me an hour and a half in between races and it'll be a thousand just different suspension so at least the power is the same the 600 was about 85 90 horsepower lower so it was harder to ride the bike it was just totally different and uh you know, it's six hundreds are awesome. I, I love watching the race, and it was just hard. It's hard for me to be riding a superbike and that. But now next year we're going to ride two thousand, so it should be a little bit easier.